Well, I'm joined with my very good friends, uh, Rick Williams and Hans Sundberg. Uh, my name's Chris Simmons. Uh, you might not know me either. And so we're going to um, have a conversation. It's the first conversation actually we've recorded, but we've been having them for two or three years now, I should think. I don't know, at least two years, I think we've been talking and we, we, we discuss theology and I, I'm in the but both, um, I know Hans, you have a PhD in systematic theology and Rick, I'm not sure. I know you have a PhD somewhere in theology. So uh, they're both, and, and we're, we're just gonna have a conversation on um, a particular book. So we're, we're going to have a look at a book. The, the book is, is this book. You can, it's probably seeing it the wrong way around, but it's Atonement in the Kingdom. And it's, uh, it's, its title is quite grandiose, really. It's a grandiose title for a book, uh, Reviewing Atonement and Retrieving the Gospel. So it's looking at atonement theories, the cross of Christ. It's looking at the gospel and its diminution. Um, Rick was asked to comment, and so he has uh, some comments at the end of the book. It's, uh, it's, its main contributor is uh, Derek Morphew, who's known I think probably within vineyard circles and others and it's a great subject to talk on because it's things we're all passionate about we're passionate about the gospel we're passionate about the kingdom of God um, you you cannot ignore the last few years and, and the, the the again looking at the cross of Christ the atonement theories of the cross so for a broad overview Rick maybe what what do you what do you think? Yeah, thank, thanks, Chris. I, um, I, I think the book starts off, you know, as you say, asking a fundamental question and a really helpful question because it comes back to, to thinking about what actually is the gospel that we preach. Um, not the one we say we preach, but the one that we do preach. And, um, and I think if I could put it like this, the thesis of the book, as you know, in, in, in terms of the way that I see it, is that, is that it's arguing that reduction has, has taken place whereby there has been an elevation and an isolation of a particular aspect of the gospel, uh, which is the atonement, and that is let, um, resulted in this, this sort of reduction of the, the, the gospel, diminution of the gospel. And the solution to that is the broad, expansive um, good news of the kingdom of God, the gospel of the kingdom of God. And it's really, really that that I think is the, is the thesis of the book. Um, and I think it raises all kinds of implications and things that would be good to talk about. Yes, I'd, I'd agree with that. No. I, I think though it's, it's a shame because the, <clears throat> the topics are so brilliant. And, and of course they, they, they place quite an emphasis on the Swedish theologian writing nearly a hundred years ago, 80 years ago. Which we have a Swedish theologian here who can who can comment on that. Yeah, thank you. Um, well, uh, Gustav Aulén, which is, is the, the guy, he was a professor in systematic theology and then he became a bishop of the Swedish Lutheran Church. And, and in his teaching and his lectures on, on the atonement, he, he made a broad overview, which has been a, a classic when it comes to uh, theology studies about the atonement. What, what is the really the theory of atonement that is biblical and that has worked in the church, has been influential in the church? And um, he, he comes up with that, that, that the, the, the major theme that sort of combined or, or is the, the key uh, atonement theory is uh, Christus Victor, which is Latin for Christ is the, is the conqueror and, and who is defeated death and has now risen. And of course, you, you have to remember that Aulien, uh, he, he was a Lutheran 
very much Lutheran uh, minister. And, and when I think about him, I think that, 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 that his life and, and, and the way that he influences the, the church and the larger church, uh, he, he, he is of course a Lutheran, which starts with Luther's major exploration that, that uh, when he was at, uh, under the attack, or how, I don't know how to, to say it better, from this um, uh, lightning, where he was afraid that he would die as a young young man, uh, he called out to to their saint and said, "Please help us, Holy Anna. I think that that I want to become a monk and I want to spend my rest of my life as as a uh, in prayer and and searching your will and coming to know you, to God." And out of that fear comes his understanding that God is for us uh, when he, he really comes to the gospel that, 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 that in Romans 1, that, that, that faith is going to give you the entrance to the heart of God and, and to find that, that, that God is good. So Luther comes out of that and, and his teaching is justification by faith believing God, sola scriptura, and then of course together with Calvin and the rest of the reformers, they build a, a theory base. And, and Aulian was, was uh, 400 years later, he was part of that. So he's underlining that Christ did conquer on the cross all the enemies. And he would quote Luther saying, it's the devil, it's death, it's sin, and it's my worldly flesh. And all has died with Christ as he died. And he rose again on the third day. And now he is the Lord above all lords. He is the only king. So, so our land is a good way to start thinking about the atonement. But you have to remember, he did not equate, um, the, the, uh, no, he did, did not draw the conclusion that atonement means um, uh, it's just a small part of the kingdom of God. His conclusion was that atonement is the, uh, the diamond in the picture. You yeah. know, that, that's the epicenter of everything. And everything comes out of that. And it has to do with man's sin that is, that is forgiven through what Jesus Christ has done. And that is the gospel in all its glory. Yeah. And that's that's the part of the book I found, well, the most disquieting, really, because the cross is central to everything. Now, how you understand the atonement, particularly, but the cross is 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 absolutely centered to everything. Paul's, you know, he died for our sins. We're buried with him. The, yeah. Whenever Paul talks about almost any conflict or anything, it's he goes back to the cross of Christ. Mm. When the early preaching of Peter to, to um, you know, the to, to at Pentecost or then before the Sanhedrin or then to Cornelius, it's about the cross. Mm. Mm. And for some reason, the, the, the book, what, what, what the book is saying is that the, this atonement, because it's not Christus Victor, because that is not the central way of, of, of looking at the atonement, it's been another way we can look at penal substitution that is the reason that the gospel has been reduced now I, I i'm not sure i believe that because it's a sweeping period of history it's a huge hundreds and hundreds of years of church history to come to that conclusion mm. um, there's no question in the west the gospel has been we can talk about that but i suppose overall you you cannot remove the cross of christ from being central to everything mm. it is central to everything mm. and, and 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 when he's saying no you know in the early days john wimber wrote to all his worship leaders and said can you read wayne grudem's book and i want you to put the cross more into your worship songs that's right that's yes. that's, that's a great pastoral word from john wimber i mean how bless them in the vineyard but how much must they miss having some direction, some correction, some, that isn't there anymore. But, you know, he, he was right. And for some reason um, that is beyond me, Derek Morphew seems to think he was wrong. He was wrong to do that. So uh, 
Yeah, I, I, I think also, Chris, that, that one of the things that, that the book um, seems to do is that it, it, it looks, it feels as though it's driving a wedge between these two great glorious aspects of biblical revelation. Um, and that, that I think is fundamentally wrong. I mean, yeah. what we want is to understand more deeply how the kingdom integrates with the cross and the resurrection. It's not, a, it's not an either or, it's not a, it's not a choice, you, you know, it, it's both and. And it's only when we really work away at that, the way that it all integrates in God's great story of love uh, for yes. the world and salvation for the world that, 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 that we can rejoice in this. So it does feel as though um, it may inadvertently maybe push people into different camps. I'm all for finding ways that bridges can be built so that we can see the great depth and strength of the scriptures in all of its revelation. Hmm. Of, which, of which the atonement, um, you know, we've just come out of Easter. What a glorious time it is. I struck, I, I struck again, you know, in, in those weeks leading up to Jesus and following the gospel passages through on that. Jesus is walking the road to Jerusalem for the last time. All the things that happen. And then ultimately, there is this, there is this death and then there is this life. Well, that's that's the heart of the gospel. That's that's what the gospel is. You see, I, I do. It, it then makes me wonder if you include, um, you know, so many other things um, in in the articulation of the gospel. It does make me wonder what we are actually saying, saying to people if it's not that narrow, um, very clear gospel that focuses, as, as Paul says in um, 1 Corinthians 15, 3, you know, that he died for our sins according to the scriptures, he rose again after three days according to the scriptures, you know, that's, that, that, that's it. And it makes me think, oh gosh, you know, what, what do people think that the good news is? What do we think that the gospel, what God did for us is? Do, do we really think that Jesus came into the world to make bad people good or, or, you know, good people better? No, it's far more radical than that. What the gospel says is that, is that he came to give dead people life. And when we look at the cross and the resurrection, what we see is a death, God's death, and a life, a resurrection, which is the foundation for what he wants to do for each, each, of, each of us. And to go any, anywhere else, you know, is going to, well, I think that is going to diminish what we have in the richness of the gospel, which finds its, its rooting in the context, in the broader context of the kingdom of God. Yeah. No, I, I, I agree, Rick. I, I think that's exactly the, the questions we have to address as we study this very uh, interesting and important book, um, Atonement and the Kingdom, how it should relate. And, and what is the wording between the atonement, Christus as victor, um, as he died for our sins, because of our sins, carried them, and made peace with God and then went through death and then into, uh, into resurrection. Th yeah. That is the heart of the gospel. That is the heart of God, that the God is in Christ suffering for our sins because of our sins. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and as he is risen again on the, on the third day, uh, life is brought into all kind of, of relationships, especially the ones between me and God and us and God. Yes. Um, and, 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 and the kingdom is, of course, the, 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 the presence of God, the rule of God, but, but uh, it, it is a result of the heart of God. I mean, in our lives as we experience it, 
uh, as the apostles and the prophets, and then of course uh, the church has tried to minister in the power of God. Uh, it, that is not the gospel. It's a result of the gospel what Jesus has done. Exactly. And, and that, is, that is, I guess, the, the, the critic we all have that, that the, 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 in this book that, that the kingdom is sort of elevated to be on the same yes, exactly. page. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yeah, it's I, why I we do communion. It, it's why the God. I suppose, what do we want to teach people? What do we want people to understand as, as they go deeper into Christ? What do yeah. we need to understand? And it is those hours on the cross. It, it is the the depth that, that, that Jesus has paid, that we're grateful for, that we have been rescued and we're not perishing anymore. Yeah. I suppose, see, but my, my background is Catholic and then I, I you know, I came to um, a vineyard and, and I, I did wonder because the way the gospel was presented to me as a young man and trying to figure it out, then I went to, you know, theological college, which, gave me a very broad academic understanding but didn't help me pastorally at all was that once or twice a year what was called the gospel was brought out and that that was to do with Jesus's death his resurrection that was the gospel it was brought out once or twice a year and and I wondered then why what about if I'm you know Joe you know Joe blogs or Josephine blogs I come in on a Sunday well it's bad luck I'm not on the Sunday to hear the gospel I, I did that plagued me for a long time until really I read Tom Wright's book which is really a backdrop to this because he explains the diminution of the gospel and says with the word that we're using for gospel is wrong we're using the gospel as the means to salvation but it's much much broader than that and then Scott McKnight says, of course, well, the Gospels, he was asking himself a first year seminary question, if not a primary school question. Why are the Gospels called the Gospels? Mm -hmm. Because they are the Gospels. And, and, and there you see the cross. We know nothing of Jesus's early life. It's not important. Nothing really with a brief period of ministry and, and inaugurating the kingdom and a huge amount. As he goes to the cross. Yeah. because this this is making him the king of history the mm. king of the universe the king of everything he 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 now is lord whether you like him as your lord whether you want him to be your lord he is mm. it's it's like going to russia and i don't want president putin to be my president bad luck easy president Tsar putin you know so well, it's, it's the same with king jesus yeah amen yeah. he's a king is Whether you like him or not, and I, I think, well, yeah. Where, once I understood that, I, I understood you can come to Christ in lots of different ways, and that we have brought the gospel lower. We have that the, the, the parts when I'm reading this book, I, I don't think it's it's got much to do with the atonement, in my view. I, I don't know why why he thinks it is all to do with that, um, and and that we can. We can present the gospel that Jesus is Lord and talk about his life and ministry. And the result will be you'll meet him. Hmm. Yeah. And then the epicenter of that, the reason you can meet him, the reason you can be changed is the cross. That is the only reason, the cross. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I think I, with that or? I think that the you know this. The, the great truth that, that Jesus and God, God is the king, you know, of course, runs through the whole of scriptures. And I'm sure there will be people um, <clears throat> who may be listening to this who, who, who will say, well, there you are, Rick, you've, you've certainly rode back on your belief in the kingdom of God. And actually, nothing could be further from the truth. Um, it's not, it, it, it's in no way a rowing back on, on the kingdom of God. It is, it's actually just wanting to understand it in the biblical context. And um, la the language I like to use is that I see the king, the kingdom is a glorious thing. I thank God for every part of it. It was the message on Jesus' lips. It's, it's, it's the prayer that, that is coming from our hearts. 
um, you know, and um, we, we, we just, we, we, we love the way that Jesus ministered with, with the words of God, the works of God, the ways of God. I mean, it's just sensational. And we, you know, we all need the deliverance that we see in, in, in the kingdom. Um, but, but, but that there is so much more to, to the kingdom, you know, starting, starting as the book says at, um, Jesus incarnation going right the way through to his return. That's a massive, you know, spread of God's wonderful work. And I do see the kingdom really as the fruit of the gospel. It's the context of the gospel. It's the fruit of the gospel. Yeah. All of that has been, been made possible by what God himself did. God becoming man and coming into the world and dying and rising for us. He did it all for us, what we couldn't do for ourselves so we could be united back to God. And I think, I, I, I think that it's marrying those two things together and not confusing them or, or, yes. or, or, not, or not saying that this, you know, narrow, cross-focused, resurrection-focused gospel has somehow been reduced. And the answer is to have this whole big view of the kingdom as, as to take its place as the gospel we present. No, that's it. So, so the book doesn't answer the question why Paul and the other New Testament writers continued when they spoke about the gospel to define it in that narrow way. There has to be an entrance into the kingdom where yeah. Jesus is king. And it's through that narrow way of the cross and the resurrection that is the only way of getting into the kingdom. Mm. Yeah, it, it, it has to do with, with, with man's uh, sinfulness. The, the gospel is not therapy. It, it, it may be result in me becoming a better person, but, but it, it basically it has to do with I am not born with an relationship with God. I have to be born again. Yeah. And the only way to get through that is that I have to um, repent and has to be born again by the Spirit. Mm. And, and that comes out of what Jesus has done for me. So, so that, that is the key thing for yeah, man. Do you think for individual that man. once you need to know already that it, it's like driving a car, do you need to know precisely how the engine works? Yeah. To know yeah. that when you start it, you're moving and, and over time you find out how he's done it. You, you come into more detail, but I remember years ago I'd become a Christian and I was talking to a lady. She was an older Catholic lady, actually. And she said, I said, what, what was the conversion for you? She said, I was sitting outside on a spring day and I looked at a flower and it was so beautiful. And I said, Jesus, you must be real. To and there the spirit of God came into her and changed her life. Wow. Now she's Catholic, so she's brought up with, you know, Christ has died, Christ is risen, the cross, the, the theology of that, but she'd never met him. Mm. She met him through that way and the, yeah, the kingdom yeah. of God coming upon her. And I, I wonder if, I, I suppose if the, the precision of the gospel is, is, is to be known, the way in, but what do you say week after week after week at church that is the gospel that can bring people? Um, I, I think, I think um, it's a good question, Chris, and I, yeah, think, uh, that, really. I, I think that as we, as we teach from the Bible, you know, week by week, we're wanting, we're wanting to present that gospel. We shouldn't, we shouldn't um, give the impression that there is only one way of preaching the gospel. The gospel is one, and it, will, it remains the same, but there is multiple ways that it, it is presented in the scriptures. And I think we need to follow the way that each passage you know, in, it, in its context, in its whole biblical context, points to Jesus and to the love of loving, saving love and justice of God upon the cross and the resurrection. So there will be a multiple different ways. And we, you know, God preserve us from just rattling out the same formula each week. Yes. Yeah, I think that's the point. 
the, 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 there isn't, yes, there isn't some formulaic way of saying this or that or no. No, something no. that's far more vibrant and alive about the person of Jesus. Yes. I, I listened to Scott McKnight, who, who I, you, you'll all know and like, like me, but I was listening to him in Denmark. And at the Baptist College he teaches at somewhere, um, if you, you know, they, they get a lot of people who aren't Christians, but they have to do his course. How good is that? They have to do his six week, eight week course. And one of the girls is, um, that came was from another religion. And she said, but I, I don't want to do it. And he said, that's fine, but then you, you won't be able to come. This is compulsory. And eventually she reluctantly came along, didn't get any. And, and he said, but by the end of the seventh or eighth week, she believed. Because hmm. he just, he, he was teaching about Jesus, talking yeah. about Amen. Jesus from the gospels. Yeah. And, and she's there listening more. And, and, and she said to him, no one's ever told me that this is this is what Jesus is like. Yeah. And she came yeah. and she came to believe in him through the Gospels, which are the gospel. You know, it's in, in that sense. But at the epicenter of that is mm. how? Yeah. The, the, yeah, the yeah, work yeah. that he's done, you see. And I, that's how I. My part for the book that I just find, you know, <laughs> close to abhorrent is, is to remove the centrality of the cross. I mean, that's just because, again, I suppose, what's the closest church I know in the scriptures that would e emphasize the kingdom of God over the cross? And, and to me, that's the Corinthian church. Miracles are happening. Healings are happening. The church is growing. It's growing in status. Uh, they're speaking in the tongues of angels and very proud of themselves. And the person who most embodies the cross is the Apostle Paul, and they don't like him. And I, I look at the charismatic church, I think it's just the same. Mm -hmm. they, they like the hype and the signs and the wonders and the healing. They want the, the people who epitomize the cross, the suffering servant. Yeah. And I think if you don't have the cross at the center, then you have a church more akin to the Corinthian church. And it doesn't matter how successful it looks. It's, it will never go deep. It will never go deep in people's lives. Yeah. yeah. And, and if, if that's to be promulgated to the wider church, this book, then it's almost, for me, it's like God held the church then. Mm. Mm. And, I, I, and some I'm of these conclusions we'll talk about as well, not just the cross. Yeah. But, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just you saying that, Chris. I mean, I do think that there is something in this which is an important message for the church. Yes. And um, I'm, rem I'm reminded of the account, um, can't remember where I heard this, of, uh, of a Christian conference taking place. And uh, everybody is there, you know, carried away in worship, wonderful worship, eyes closed. And while the worship is going on, a massive cross on the front wall crashes to the ground. And the, and the person who was telling the story said, um, pretty much nobody noticed. The worship just continued on seamlessly, you know, everyone with their eyes closed. And it's kind of, it's quite a picture really, isn't it? I mean, I, yeah. I don't think, we're not living in an age that is the first to drop the cross. I, I mean, it's been happen, happening down through, through history, but I do think that it's worth pointing out yeah. where there is a danger of the cross being dropped. And, and to, because it's just such a wonderful, wonderful, yes. <laughs> you, you know, it, it, it encompasses everything that, that, that God has done, that, yeah. that God himself becomes man and, and, and chooses to go to the cross for us. And I mean, he, he displays his love, but also his justice, because, mm. you, you know, we, 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 we seem to be in our, in our world, in our culture, so reticent to talk about the, the judgment aspect of sin, but it's all resolved for us at the cross by what, you know, Jesus does yes. lovingly, yes. willingly, but he pays the price. Yes. And, you know, I think we've come through these years of, of COVID and 
people's deaths. I've been, I've been struck in the UK, certainly, Hans, by in the early days, we would have these these kind of um, reports every new every every day on the news, yeah. and 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 what and what you would hear was always the number of deaths yeah. plural, the number of deaths, and that, that would roll out. But no one ever talked about death. <laughs> the, the the fact that you know, as we all know, it's that it's something that's a part of the human condition. We're all yeah. going. To but we're all going to experience it. But, but, but when it comes to the Christian church, I mean, we need to go back to the point of saying, death is, death is not, we not, don't need to just talk about death as the end of life, which is the way that most people see it, but that death in, in God's hand is the judgment for sin. That's that. That's the reason, and 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 that's why the heart of the gospel is that Jesus willingly, as God, yes. takes that takes that death into Himself, pays the price, and then rises. You know the yeah. death and life thing again, um, and it's the most glorious, wonderful, truth wonderful that that we must not. You know, we must not pull yeah, yeah. away from. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and and and. Um, I, I was just reminded when we are talking uh, about uh, Saturday uh, when I was in Kathmandu and uh, my friend Hokan was preaching and in that church they had two services and, and that, that was in the day when many people that are Hindus in Nepal were sacrificing uh, an animal and giving the blood to their gods and uh, this um, so, so uh, anyway, in the, in the church service, my friend was preaching and, and he was speaking out of Hebrews that everything is completed. There is no need for future sacrifice. And, and one of the things that comes out as, as about reading uh, in my reading about, about this theme in this book is that uh, th there is a stream in the Western world that sacrifices out of date, it is not up to date anymore. The, the sacrifice is, is something that comes with an old worldview. But in, in, in Nepal and in countries like that, it, it's not out of date. It's actually what people do. I, I think the numbers they, they told us that, that Saturday where they meet instead of Sundays uh, is that that, that day they, they assume that uh, as many as three million animals were given were given their lives because people wanted to sacrifice to the gods wow and i was i was going to this this yeah. apartment preaching in in the suburb or, or a city close to baktapur close to to Kathmandu. and and the smell of blood that was just outside the door was obvious so, so it's just part of it and anyway my pre my friend was preaching <laughs> and and in, in that church, they wanted to give the message to everyone this uh, reconciliation uh, weekend. So instead of having the, the loud speakers into the church, the people should hear it in the building, they were putting them outside, turning it to all the neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> so my friend, he, he was really getting enthusiastic, as, as you are, Rick about the message of the cross and that Jesus has risen and there is no need anymore because he has uh, went into to the altar in, in heaven and brought his own blood and put it on the altar and therefore there is no need for any ceremonial or, or sacrifice because it's fulfilled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then substitution, sacrifice. Anyway, so he's screaming out uh, it's fulfilled. There's no yes. need for more sacrifice. And, and I was sitting there and inside the church and, and in the surrounding, there was not a sound. And, and Kathmandu is quite noisy. <laughs> <laughs> so it was totally silent, both services when it came to that part, because it was a truth that spiritually went into the neighborhood and into the church. And it was a message to all these people. You don't have to do this anymore. You don't yeah. have to live in fear. Oh. The price yeah. is paid. God has himself taken on our burden 
and that brings the kingdom. Now anything is possible because he's risen also. Anyway, so it, it was a stark reminder to us that, that the gospel is really about sacrifice. It's about God giving himself life. And the Western world, in my mind, should really think about having this um, mindset that our mindset and our world, my worldview is the right one. And, and no, it's not. The biblical worldview says that, that yes, there is a sacrifice that man needs to give and we can't give it. But God himself has taken that on himself yeah. and he has reconciled me and everyone who wants to believe and receive. Yes, yeah, it's just, it's just wonderful, thrilling. Because the other thing that, that came through that, I, I, and I think to be fair, I mean, the, there's an appreciation of different views of the atonement, maybe if they are putting Christus, Victor, but it's also, I, I'm not sure I agree at all that this is the reason why the gospel has been a diminution of the gospel, really. But it comes away from that sense of sacrifice, I suppose, and that without him we're perishing yeah we're lost yeah um and if you go down that road and and so you're you're now focusing on the kingdom the kingdom of god has come and you know the good news and, and he wants to heal you he wants to set you free all of this without that emphasis well to me it, it's leading towards which is where much of in my opinion a lot a great deal of the church towards a kind of a universalism and so it's it's put in these are the three kind of um not atonement theories but this is what people have believed down the centuries one is yeah. that hell is eternal conscious torment which is historically what the church has believed forever as far as i can tell i'm sure the reformers all believed it it, it was it, it's certainly a belief and and that person you talked about hans was it luther who came through fear yeah, he came. It, you you can't remove that. No. Um, and if you replace that with, which is what I th I think Derek Morphy has done, is to say, well, this is an equally valid position, universalism, and it and it was held by Oregon and and Oregon's you know Gregory the Wonder Worker and and the halfway house. You, know, you can quote John Stott and David Instone Brewer or whatever, but I don't think you can make those equal. I, I don't think you can say that down a broad sweep of church history, they are held as equal and should be held as equal um, with the gospel that's going to be preached because the old mathematician, what if you're wrong? What if you're yeah. wrong? Yeah. You're, you're leading people into eternity with mm. what mm. is effectively a false gospel. Yeah. You're telling them that they're okay, that as they enter into eternity, what if you're wrong? And of course, we all believe that they are wrong. Mm. That Christ's death must be. The, 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 you have to accept that. Mm. Mm. May, I throw in, may, may I throw in something uh, yeah. while still rem remembering it? <laughs> when, <laughs> when I and my wife Lotta was released and laid hands on by, by the senior leadership in, in the vineyard worldwide, uh, when the Nordic Vineyard was established, m most of the, the, the national directors were in, in, in Norway where this took place. And at that point, we had translated uh, into Swedish and the Nor Nordic language the, the statement of faith that, that John Wimber wanted to, to have uh, as an expression of faith, like the Apostolic or Nicene Creed. creed. And in that statement, it was very literal uh, sayings about the outcome for people that did not receive Jesus Christ. Uh, it was not like a page or something, but I, I, if I remember, I, I think the text was like five pages or something. And part of it says that, 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 that there is a hell. And, and if, you are, uh, if you are there, you will experience uh, uh, what hell is like mm. being conscious mm. so annihilation in, 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 in Swedish the <laughs> same word but pronouncing differently 
and universalist. It, it was never a part of where Vineyard came from. Yes. And that has struck me reading this, this book that it, it, it sort of, you know, I've read a lot of systematic theology and uh, over the years, and, uh, and, and uh, th this is what it sounds like. It goes there because yes. that's the easiest way to express it. And, and in my mind, I remember talking about with the, the other national directors and, and, and some of the pastors who said, are we really, do we really believe this? And I said, yeah, we really believe this. <laughs> we really believe this because this is biblical faith. Yes. And in the book, the guy is trying, is making a lot of good work speaking about this. At, at the same time, it, it, it goes that direction that, that it's a, it, it's an opening of doors into universalism and annihilation. And, and I don't agree. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think it, it doesn't portray <coughs> what New Testament are saying. I don't yes. believe that. I do think there is a hell. And our job is to tell people that not that, that they are going there, but they don't have to go there because yeah. Jesus has died. Yeah. He has risen. Yeah. And, yeah. and that life is given to everyone. And that's good news. Yeah, I, I, absolutely, Hans. And I think, I, I think that's, you know, it's, and, and what helps us, I think, in this is, is actually the richness of the um, atonement metaphors that the Bible yes. give us. I, I mean, th there isn't one. It is like a gemstone. There's this multifaceted, you know, wonderful range of, mm. of, of metaphors, you know, many of which are underlining um, the way that the atonement, you know, with all of those metaphors trying to grasp at this incredible truth that God has done for us, this activity yeah. that, that he has done for us, you, you know, that, that they're speaking into the fact that it's, that it is saving us from something um, yeah. and, and opening up a door into, into something which is vast and wonderful. So, you know, I, I love that. And, and so often it seems as though the arguments when, when the atonement is, is discussed, it feels as though people are presenting almost um, a choice. You choose which one you want, <laughs> we, we, you, you know, but, but it's, the whole point is that, it's, that they're complementary. We need them all, that they're yes. all speaking into the richness of this mystery, this wonderful thing that God has done for us in Jesus. Um, and uh, which, which includes the, the, the resolving, as you say, Hans, of, of judgment, um, as, as well as the experience of the presence and the love of God in, in just un, uh, untold ways. <laughs> yeah, yes. it's, it's wonderful. Yeah. I, I, I'm not quite sure how you get there or how they've got there. But maybe you have to see, you have to see God as judge. You have to see Jesus as judge. Yeah. Judge of all the earth. And, and maybe it's because we haven't had a war for 80 years. Maybe because there hasn't been the injustice. I don't know why um, th there are certain streams in the body of Christ um, pushing towards a more universalist view that, that doesn't get you anywhere and it's personal to me because in coming to christ for me i mean god made it clear if i rejected him i'd go to hell i was 19. that wasn't because of the that was growing up as a catholic but i knew i i knew that it was a, and when i made that choice it was a wonderful blissful time of, of, of his love yeah. coming into yeah. my life but i also knew i had that choice and i knew on the other side of it was was hell was perishing yes yeah. and i think if you're going to take this again the kingdom view without the cross i i could see how you could get there mm. yeah. Je jesus who, you know, and, but again it, it's not being true at all to the words of jesus he spoke more about hell than anyone mm. um, probably because he, the, the words of our master make it you know center make it 
something that is unthinkable is is true because we're hearing it from the horse's mouth maybe mm-hmm. at john wimber's funeral david uh, pitches was there with others yeah people representing the, the larger church, and especially from the UK. Anyway, um, uh, uh, we were having coffee uh, afterwards, uh, after the, the, the funeral, and, and I said, David, as you look um, into the vineyard, what would be your recommendation of things you see that we need to, to, to think about, which has helped the larger church, which you see is maybe neglected or could be neglected and just an open question like that and one of the things that he mentioned uh, i've been thinking about reading about uh, this this theme in this book and and, and replies and so forth um, i was reminded and he said i think that you as you you celebrate um, uh, the lord's supper that, that maybe you should bring in uh, the lord's prayer but also the Apostle, uh, Apostle Creeds. Yeah, yeah. And in that creed, he, it said, Jesus is coming back to judge, mm-hmm. living and dead. And, and as I was thinking about that, uh, and as you were speaking, uh, Chris, I, 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 I think that at, at if you don't have those formulas, which should, of course, should be enlarged, uh, maybe, um, it, 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 it helps because it, it brings back things that you are sort of tends to forget if you preach themes instead of Bible yes, texts. Oh, totally. Yeah. And, and I think that that's the way that we can, can help each other say, okay, you can preach themes, of course, like the kingdom of God and, and so forth, but do preach regularly on texts yeah, yeah. where you can choose which is the most important and that yes. you feel, but it's just Absolutely. there to, to guide you and to remind you and to underline the truths of scriptures. Yes. And I think the Holy Spirit works through that. Yeah, yeah. It's, I think that's good. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's in my verbatim growing up as a Catholic. I know it. I know the Apostles' Creed. I, I, it's been very helpful over the years to know it. Yeah, yeah. And, um, Without that, you're right, that may be, see, I'm not in the vineyard, so I don't really want to critique it. We're critiquing the book, but you can see why it would go the wrong way. And yeah. if this book is, is any judgment on the vineyard, then it's going the wrong way, in my opinion. Yeah. It, it's absolutely, it needs some <laughs> theological correction quick. And maybe that's probably um, the, the reasons. I'm not preaching can, can the I... Bible week to week and not having a, a kind of a, a plumb line of truth yeah this yeah is, this, and, and i'm saying that with all love towards the vineyard because you know it's, it's my home for many years and you know when, when i'm listening to someone who's a vineyard theologian and I'm, you know on on, on issues and i'm thinking how on earth have you got here mm, how yeah. have you jumped from a to z i mean it, yeah um yeah i i mean i think i think chris the it it, it does come across it at, at various points in the book, quite starkly, um, I, I'm, I'm just glancing down at this. You know, the big picture of theology, the the big picture theology of the kingdom, and the stage by stage narrowing narrowing down of the Western Reformed tradition can no longer coexist. And I'm just thinking to myself, well. It seems to me that the New Testament, the Bible, does cause those things to coexist. Yes, it does. Absolutely. It it has a wonderful way of the synoptic Gospels, or or indeed the whole four Gospels, and and the good news of the kingdom of God coexisting with the brilliant work under the inspiration of the Spirit that those that followed on, particularly Paul, you know, then synthesized. And it it seems to me, again, we're back to this thing where we're trying to divide and separate what what is a whole. Um, That's the great conclusion, actually, Rick. That's the, to me, that's the conclusion that's gone wrong somewhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That that the gospel does look foolish. I mean, how wonderful for John Wimber to, because he changed our lives, didn't he? His teaching. John came with tremendous... Great. I mean, he was just a man flowing with grace and power, and he, he demonstrated the kingdom 
and the power of God in a very laid back and humble way. But he also epitomized the kingdom, the suffering, the difficulties, the hardships. He, he, he wasn't preaching a kind of a, a prosperity gospel at all. He, he was open about his sins and his struggles and eating. And, you know, he, he, he epitomized um, living, yeah. living out of, of, of the gospel that he preached. And I think if, if the kingdom is, is reduced to just the power of God and healing and, and coming and you're, you're seeing all these wonderful signs of power, well, you better be prepared for the cross or it's going to corrupt you and kill you because yeah. you, are gonna, you, you are going to be foolish and suffer. You're going to be weak. You're going to look weak. You're going to look foolish. You're going to, as far as the world's concerned, what on earth have you given your life to? Mm. are you crazy giving your life to this <laughs> yeah. that's you know that's when you know that, yeah 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 absolutely uh, maybe i can just shortly comment on on your um you hinted at that chris um you know our our, uh, our thankfulness to vimber and to to the vineyard <clears throat> that that the book um, is written in the vineyard context yes and, and it very much uh, underlined the questions that that john and the theologians um, when they started on vimber when they started this thing the, the issues they had to de de deal with and it also came out of theology wise from from your elder lad and, and friends like uh, theologians like him when it comes to the kingdom there is a larger perspective so, so don't minimize, but, but that's, uh, as we say, uh, in our opinion, it's a result of, of the center of, of yes. this, which is the atonement. And anyway, uh, so, so when you listening to this, uh, or reading the book, it, it is written in the context of vineyard. That's also yes. our, our critique because we have, I don't know how many years we have together in that, in that sphere. Uh, Probably over a hundred, I would think. <laughs> hundred years together, so so we can speak with some some uh, authority in that. But but our concern, uh, the three of us, is, is that why on earth are you making problems when it it should be mm -hmm. held together in a beautiful way? And John was John Wimber was very assertive when it came to that the cross is the center. Yes, you have to be born again. And if you if you should really understand John, he came out and he became a Christian together with a guy called Gunnar, which took him out to all the bars and the worst places in their area and said, now we go in there and we share the gospel. Yeah. And yeah. the gospel is about Jesus died, died on the cross and it's for you sinners. <laughs> yes. And people who went yeah. there were in those places, they knew they were sinners, they needed good news. And that is God is for you. He has died instead of you. Now you repent and you come with me and go to the next part and you start sharing what you know about Jesus. And you have 24 hours till we do this tomorrow evening or 48 hours. You read the scriptures, you pray, and then you share what Jesus has done for you yeah. and what is what he has done for everyone. Yes. That was his background. Yeah. Otherwise, you don't understand him. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah. Should we close it there? I think so. I think so. We've probably said enough, but uh, yeah. Thanks very much. Right, for actually, you. lots of information and lots of lots of things to ponder and think about, really.